I've never seen an NBA player so polarized before they even play a single game other than Bronny James. I mean, it's been a while. We've always had hype for Zion Williamson, you know, and even still there was some hype for Lonzo Ball, but they weren't really polarizing. Bronny James delivers us something that we haven't seen in a very, very long time. A drastic boom or bust before you even step on the court. Now, I'll always compare him to Zion because Zion had a little bit of talk of whether or not his game is going to really translate to the league. And for the most part, it has, even though his body and the critiques of his game and him being a little bit too heavy for as much as he does has kind of caught on to him. But the reality is Zion showed us a lot, a lot that we can work with. But the weird thing about Bronny is that Bronny didn't really show us that much when he was in college. When he was in college, he had an unfortunate heart condition that sidelined him out of playing basketball for I think like around six to seven months. And so right now we're seeing a kind of like fresh Bronny that, you know, he really hasn't played organized basketball since really a few games in college. And so we, we are kind of a little bit hesitant on what he can actually bring to the game. But I don't think that's the real reason why people are really harsh and really critical on Bronny James. I think that really starts with his dad, LeBron. Now, we all know LeBron, one of the best players of all time, hoopers, etc., etc. It's his impact on the game that we all respect, but also his influence outside the game. We've understood that he's always wanted to have his sons play in the NBA, and at best, if he could will it, play in the NBA with him. Who do you want to play with? Bronny is number one on my fucking list. That's dope. He's number one on my list that I want to play nice. with for you sure. You want him to beat you? You think? Nah, he can't beat me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bronny, nah. Bronny. Beat your dad, man. <laughs> he said this on multiple occasions, and you know, even had interviews where he's talking with uh, his wife, Savannah, and he's clearly has stated this. But there's always some type of, you know, push come to shove moment. When you have your son and you, you know, if we're going to be a thousand percent honest, is not ready for the NBA, but you only have a few years left, well, what do you do? Now, he set his son up, in my opinion. He told everybody he's looking at NBA channels and he sees that his son, Bronny, the same Bronny that we saw in the summer league, is well and above beyond more than a lot of these NBA players. And these are his contemporaries. These are people who he, he knows, people who are amongst his peers. And he's basically saying this college kid, his son, is better than a lot of these cats. Now, for a lot of people back in the day, they were like, oh yeah, of course. But that was before really Bronny had any playing time and really before Bronny even had the heart condition because we could see the trajectory and where his game is going to go. But the issue comes by when you actually have to play in somewhat of a competitive league that is really similar to the NBA, right? So Bronny gets drafted. A lot of people have made a lot of stink about how the fact that he got drafted and the manner he got drafted. But the reality is he got drafted because of LeBron James. I don't think that he would have been on a team if it wasn't for LeBron, I think for the most part, he probably would still be in college. If he was somebody that was not LeBron James's junior, he would definitely probably not even make it to USC, but definitely still be in college, probably a D1 mid-major or something of the sort, right? Because there's still a lot to his game that he needs to improve on. But that's all thrown out the window when you have the greatest player, one of the greatest players of all time, LeBron James as your dad, and then you have one of the one of, if not the greatest agent of all time in your dad's friend, who's probably like a father figure as well or some type of unk role in his life as well. And so you have these people talking to him and they're basically explaining to him, hey, listen, we can get you drafted, but the rest is kind of up to you. But they believe in him and I think he believed in himself. And so we get fast forward all the way to the summer league and we have a lot of hype on what we're going to see from Bronny. Many people, including myself, were extremely uh, excited and enthusiastic with what he's going to bring to the table and for a lot of people they were really really severely disappointed now this is one thing that I've always had a problem with when it comes to Bronny is that there's nothing wrong with staying in college for another year 
you know, you did not have that much playing time when you were in college. And so now once the, you know, seniors actually go and you can kind of take command of the team, you can kind of figure out how you're going to play your game with the ball, without the ball, figure out how to be in certain positions in the clutch, how to bring your teammates above and beyond what their skill level shows, how to do a lot of stuff because he would have been the leader for that team. But the issue is that he did not stay that one year. And so right now we're seeing what is the byproduct of that. And so he got into the summer league. We're excited for him to play, but he's not playing well. Now, there's a few things that I wanted to say, too, before we even get back down to his game. When I was watching his game, it wasn't as if for when he had the ball, at least. Off ball is a completely different issue. But when he had the ball, at least, his shot selection was not necessarily bad. I didn't really disagree with any of the shots that he took. And for the most part, they are good shots. And those are the type of shots that you just wish you could make. Wide open threes, pull up jumpers in the mid range, uh, floaters. Everybody have experienced those times where it's like you're getting the best looks, but they're just not going down. However, there comes to a point where if you're not getting the best looks, you need to impact the game some other way or make the game a little bit easier for yourself. Now, this is something that Bronny really has a problem with because he does not understand how to move without the ball. I think it takes a lot of wherewithal and self-awareness to understand that if you don't have the ball, that does not mean that you're not within the offense. Now, a lot of role players in the NBA will understand this and move accordingly because they're expected to not have the ball. And so they have the most experience playing off ball because if they don't, they're on the bench in the G League or out any league or going overseas. But Bronny does not have that experience. He hasn't had that when he was in high school. He does not have that when he was in college. And so he for sure does not have that now. But some would say that you have the greatest basketball player of all time and your dad for a lot of people in this generation. How do you not understand that? Because even LeBron James, even when he is the one of the most ball dominant uh, players in the league, when he doesn't have the ball, you still see him do the little things like cutting, setting picks, flare screens, all of that stuff, slips, all of that stuff. But Bronny does not do it. And so what happened was when Bronny got psyched out when he wasn't making his shots, he psyched himself out of the game. He basically benched himself while he was still on the court because he did not take the easy shots. There was many times where his teammates is basically getting double covered because his man is helping in the help side defense. But whenever your man is helping in the help side defense, that is your cue to cut, get him out of there. Or you can get a wide open bucket because there's nobody there. But he never really did that. And so he struggled mightily for these first couple of games. I mean, really all the way down to four. And he really only started picking up steam towards the end. But some might say that's a little bit too late, but he has the biggest safety net that anybody can ever have in LeBron James being his dad. Him still getting opportunities and still being on the court and still taking the same amount of shots is nothing short of just being one privilege, but understanding your privilege, knowing that you will be given more opportunities than most. And so even though he was missing his threes, literally going like 0 for 14 at one point, maybe even worse, not hitting his threes, I still looked at his shot selection and said, you know what? These shots aren't really that bad. These shots aren't a necessarily force. They are simply shots that are not going in. And so for me watching his game, I feel somewhat confident to say that, you know, when he's actually playing on ball, he'll be able to kind of impact the game as long as his shots go in. Now, when it doesn't go in, that's a whole nother thing. The good thing about Bronny, though, is that defensive wise, that guy is there. He is athletic and he has defensive awareness. He moves his feet, he shows his hands, and he's always there. He's looking for the pocket, he's looking for the steal, and he's always in the passing lanes. Sometimes he could be caught staring and sometimes get back cut. But for the most part, when you want an on ball defender, that is the person that you want on there. And I know a lot of people were upset when they were comparing him to Drew Holiday, but I mean, take away the accomplishments and whatnot, and we're just looking at skill, right? Of course, Bronny is not there. When you make these comparisons, you make the comparisons understanding that they're not there yet, but who they can be. And so Drew Holiday is a really good example of a person who, you know, his game isn't really necessarily a very ecstatic, very exciting to see. 
He takes the easy, simple shots. They don't look forced. And he gets back and he plays defense on your best player. That is the exact archetype that Bronny James can be. He won't be his dad. And I think that's something that people need to understand. His dad is great and all that stuff, but he's not going to be his dad at all. And that's okay. If you're not going to be, you know, the one of the greatest players of all time, that's okay. More NBA players are not the greatest players of all time. Most NBA players are really just trying to get a second contract. But that's fine. As long as you're able to take the advantages and take the opportunities that are given to you, I don't have any problems with Bronny and what he's doing right now. Now, did I agree with him from leaving the college? Absolutely not, but we're here now. And so I only wish the success of him and also many other players that are going into their first rookie season. And in the next video, we're gonna go into the person who I'm really most excited about, and that is Rob Dillian.